Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today in this podcast. This is the Mystery Radio Show. This show is written by Juan Mendez Scott, who is the author of the book Patience and several other books, which you can find on Amazon, Kindle, Barnes & Noble, Goodreads, and more. And in this show, we will be reading the mystery magazine filled with mysteries, shorts, and psychological thrillers. Anyway, let's begin. This is Juan Mendez Scott's Mystery Magazine, and this week's episode, we will be focused on reading his first book in the series, Prom Queen. Let's begin. This is a work of fiction. The events and characters described herein are imaginary and are not intended to refer to specific places or living persons. The opinions expressed in this manuscript or screenplay are solely the opinions of the author and do not represent the opinions or thoughts of the publisher. The author has represented and warranted full ownership and or legal right to publish all materials of this magazine and podcast. Girl, you just don't know, I said. I am willing to do anything, anything to have David. I was looking in Kathy's face when I said it, and I was smiling, but I was dead serious. He is the best looking boy in school, Cindy, Kathy said, changing the channel to an all rap video channel. But I don't know if it's worth all that though. I slurped a sip of my orange soda and said, worth all of what? Doing anything to get him? That anything could be something that gets you in trouble. I gave Kathy a funny look and I said, trouble? What do you mean trouble? What kind of trouble? Uh, the kind of trouble desperate people get themselves into, Kathy said. She had a devilish smile on her face, teasing me. I busted out laughing when I really should have been insulted, but that was the way Kathy was. Straightforward and with no cut card, Kathy, always on joke time, was tall and thin with dark brown eyes and a light brown complexion, and she had red mid-length wavy hair. Kathy was pretty, but she wasn't as pretty as I was. I was a short, petite girl with a honey complexion, and button hazel eyes. And like Kathy, my hair was wavy too. It was just longer, down my back to my waist. I'm not desperate, I said, still laughing. I was lying in her face because in some ways I was desperate for David Duncan. I liked him just that much. Had been in love with him since 11th grade when he transferred to our school from Calvert County. All the girls in school had mad crushes on David. Not only was he fine, he was getting letters from Georgetown, Maryland, and Duke to play basketball. We had just gotten out of school, still in our blue and tan school uniforms, chilling in Kathy's bedroom. Her average sized rectangular bedroom had matching wooden and plastic furniture. The floor was dark wood and the walls painted with a paneled dado, wall lamps, and crisp brown posters lined the walls, and the room was decorated with a pink and baby blue princess theme that Kathy had since she was a little girl. Kathy's room was one of four bedrooms of their colonial home in Waterford Cove. The Cove, as we called it, was a sparsely populated neighborhood in Fort Washington, Maryland. All the half million dollar homes, including the house I lived in, were built in 2005. Kathy's older brother, Carl, was away at college on a football scholarship, some school down in Atlanta, and her adopted younger sister, Tanya, was out with her parents grocery shopping. Kathy looked at me, really curious, and it caught me off guard. Kind of made me feel a little uncomfortable, too. She said, when you say anything, what exactly do you mean, Cindy? I shrugged and got up, um, and I walked over to the window, squinting my eyes up at the sun. I don't know, I said, and I really didn't know. But Cindy, David has a girlfriend, and that wouldn't be right. I turned and gave Kathy my own devilish smile. Fuck her, I said. Fuck Amanda Moss. And I was ready and prepared to stomp Amanda's guts out if I had to. Anything to have David. Kathy, going into her purse, 
shook her head, smiling. She pulled a chocolate candy bar and she said, You think Amanda is the type who will fight you over David? She can come on and she can bring it and I will kick her ass too. I don't like her anyway. You don't like her anyway because she's with David, Kathy said. Putting a piece of candy in her mouth, excuse my manners, you want one? I frowned, looking at her as if she had gone stone crazy. Kathy, you know I can't eat that. It has peanuts in it. Oh, that's right. You've got peanut allergies. Yeah, uh, are you trying to kill me? No, but Amanda will when she finds out you're trying to steal her man. I wish she would try. I wish she would get in my face about David. Kathy gave me a devious smile. Would you run and get your father's gun? I wouldn't need my father's gun. I'd kill Amanda with my bare hands. Then I thought about it, and I started to laugh a little. Um, what if she did try to kill me? Kathy and I looked at each other and busted out laughing at the thought of Amanda ever jumping in my face over David. That's if she ever had the guts to get in my face. That's when a big black wasp flew into the bedroom right through the bedroom door as if Kathy invited him in. I damn near fell out that window, trying to get out of the way. Girl, there goes that damn bee, I said, running around the room, screaming as if I had gone crazy. Kathy grabbed a teen fashion magazine lying beside the bed, and I got up from her bed, eyeing the bee. Girl, calm down. It's just a bee. Straight up, if it stings me, I'll die. The bee stopped chasing me and flew over to the window, where he landed on the windowsill. Poor thing, he probably thought the window was open so he could fly back out and back to its nest. But Kathy wasn't having it. Before that big ass bee knew what hit him, Kathy had smashed his unlucky ass against the window. He didn't die right away. He buzzed and kicked, suffering, until Kathy finally whacked him again, taking him out of his misery. Kathy looked back at me as if it was nothing. By this time, I was on the other side of the room. She picked up the dead bee in his bent, damaged wing, opened the window, and tossed him out to his grave. I frowned, and I said, how can you just pick it up like that? I'm used to it, Kathy said. I kill a bee almost every other day. They're always getting in the house, especially this time of year, around springtime. If that thing would have stung me, I would have been lying in the middle of your floor, flopping around like a dead fish, foaming at the mouth. Girl, you are allergic to everything, Kathy said, laughing and sitting back on her bed. I'm not allergic to David, though, I said, smiling, and I couldn't wait to see him at school to let him know that. Most of us were sitting in our seats at our next class, and the halls were about empty. The last bell was about to ring. And I was facing David at his locker, damn near about to kidnap him and take him to my house for lunch. You know, you mess things up, don't you? I said. David blushed, acting like he didn't know what was going on, but he did. Messing what up? He said, shrugging. You know? David, still blushing, said, No, I don't know. What am I messing up? I stood there giving him the most disappointing look that made him break out laughing. David was always smiling and laughing, teeth like white pearls. Then I flashed him my cutest smile, so cute it made him stop and stare directly into my eyes. He knew I was the prettiest girl in school, and he wanted me. David was not all that tall, and was pretty thin for a guy who was all state in football. He had a complexion that was like melting chocolate, with light brown eyes and thick curly hair always wearing his letterman jacket, a black t-shirt, jeans, and butter Timberland boots. He was perfect. I said, David, how can we ever be together if you're still with Amanda? David looked at me like I was clueless because I'm with Amanda, which doesn't make sense to me. Why doesn't it make sense to you? Our eyes locked and I knew that I was truly in love. Because we make a good-looking couple. David looked at me, disappointed. That's it? Because we make a good-looking couple, 
Yes, and plus, I like you a lot. I didn't see him walking up on us, probably because I was all in David's face. Ryan, my ex-boyfriend, gave us a hard, murdering glare as he walked by. We broke up about a month ago, and he wasn't taking it well. David had the nerve to wave at him with a what's up nod. Ryan didn't wave back. He just shook his head and kept walking. Oh, well, David is my man now, so get the F over it. I heard you and Ryan broke up, David said, peeping down the hall at Ryan. I knew he wasn't scared of Ryan. David was an all-state football star. He would have pummeled poor, sad, broken-hearted Ryan. David was the kind of guy who didn't believe in disrespecting anybody. And he probably felt he was disrespecting Ryan by talking to me, especially with me trying to book him in Ryan's face. We've been broke up. Fuck him. Now, back to me and you. So, what's up? Are you going to let me take you to the prom or what? Cindy, come on now. You know you'd be going to the prom with the prettiest girl in school. David started blushing and he was so cute when he blushed. You know, I know you're the prettiest girl in school. Hell, everybody knows that. Of course, everybody knows. I said, shrugging. David stared into my eyes, but it wasn't with love. But it's about love, he said. For me, it is anyway. Then, from out of nowhere, four-eyed Amanda walked up on us. She was glaring all in my face like she had a problem. I started to smack her glasses to the next class to be there waiting for her. I hated to admit, but I had to admit. Amanda Moss was a cute girl in her own little corny way. What drew the boys to her was her sandalwood complexion and long, curly, baby soft hair. And she had big Bambi eyes with long eyelashes and her glasses made her look like a librarian or something. Amanda, looking hard into my face, said, David, why are you standing in the halls talking? We need to get to class. I just looked at her and I knew... I had a nasty look of hate on my face, and she had the nerve to act like she was ignoring me, like I wasn't even there. What a snotty little bitch. Okay, David, we'll talk, I said, walking off and smiling back at him. I was pretty much letting him know, and his geek-looking girlfriend know, that I wasn't hardly done with him yet. He was going to be mine, whatever it took. I parked my red 2016 Volkswagen Beetle in front of our house, as I always did. Just as it started raining, my mother didn't allow me to park in the driveway that much. She hated waking me up to let her and my father's cars out of the garage so they could get to work on time. I zipped into the house and out of the downpouring rain. I had to be honest with myself. I didn't have any choice but to. I kept thinking about David Duncan, and I couldn't stop thinking about him. I went to bed thinking about him. I woke up thinking about him. And I saw his face in my breakfast plate before school. I wasn't the type of girl who had crushes on people. People had crushes on me. That was something I was used to. Boys always got on my nerves, pouring their hearts out to me and me breaking those hearts, shooting them down. I always thought David Duncan was cute. He was the cutest boy in school, but I was too into Ryan to have a crush on anybody. We had been going together since 10th grade, but Ryan got on my last nerve, acting crazy and obsessed with me. Every time another guy would look at me, Ryan was kicking their asses up and down the street. One guy he put in the hospital. I heard the guy hadn't walked straight since. I knew Amanda was crazy in love with David, Her boyfriend soon to be my boyfriend. I could tell the way she looked at his eyes that she would die for him. And I could tell the way he looked in her eyes he was in love with her as well. Seeing them in love made me sick. Made me want to run for the toilet to earl out my feelings. There were times they would give each other a quick kiss on the lips and whisper, Love ya, see you later to each other. Hearing that made me sick too. I really hated that bitch. 
When I got to my room, I kicked my shoes and socks off and got out of that wet school uniform, and I couldn't wait to get to the fresh bag of Doritos waiting for me. I put on some sweatpants and a t-shirt, and as I was doing that, I couldn't help thinking about Amanda too. How she looked at me when she saw me trying to book her boyfriend. And I thought about what Kathy said. How Amanda was going to get up in my face about it. I slipped into my parents' bedroom, leaving my wet footprints all over the rug. I knew my dad kept his gun somewhere. He didn't know I knew where he kept it, but I knew. He kept it in a metal lockbox in a huge safe in his walk-in closet that he sometimes forgot to lock. My mother would get on my dad sometimes to make sure to lock it because of my little brother Xavier with his badass. They were afraid he would get a hold of it and shoot up the house with all of us in it. I kneeled down to my father's safe and checked to see if it was open, and it was. I knew the combination anyway because I'd seen him open it a bunch of times, and there it was. His 9mm pistol. I just wanted to make sure he wasn't hiding it somewhere else. I wanted to know that I could get it, just in case Amanda got stupid. Then the doorbell rang. I eased the safe shut and dashed over to see who it was. When I saw Ryan's mother's red Cherokee Jeep, I got pissed. I was in no mood for him, and why was he ringing my doorbell? It wasn't like we were still together. I stood there at the window until Ryan got tired and left. The only problem was he didn't leave. He just kept ringing the fucking doorbell like the obsessed asshole he was. I stomped down the stairs and opened the door anyway. I wanted to get rid of him before Xavier got home from school. I didn't want him to see me and Ryan arguing again so he could go back and tell my parents, getting me in trouble. What the fuck are you doing ringing my doorbell? Then I started lying. My dad got home from work early, dickhead. He's not feeling well. He's sleep. I'm sorry, Cindy, Ryan said, looking like the sad drip that he was. Can we talk real quick? His large brown eyes looked me up and down, then dotted back up to mine. Ryan had a complexion like chalk, and his braided curly hair was as black as a blackboard. He was a tall, narrow guy with his crazy obsession was what drove me away. He was always wearing big baggy jeans and black t-shirts and Timberland boots even in the summer. I keep telling you, there's nothing else to talk about, Ryan. Saw you talking to David, he said, acting like he was about to cash an attitude about it. So I said, raising my voice, now he was all up in my business. Then that sad, sick frown I always hated blessed his face for the millionth time. Cindy, what are you doing? Cindy, why are you doing this to me? Ryan, I'm not doing anything to you. Now I have to go do my homework. I gotta go. Goodbye. I tried to close the door and he had the nerve to jam the door with his foot and keep me from closing it. He was a real asshole like that. I pushed the door with both hands, crushing his foot. I said, move your fucking foot before I break the motherfucker. Cindy, what? Please, please what? I, I miss you. Look, Ryan, you need to get over it. Please, he said, whining like a sucker. Look, I said, raising my voice. Stop acting like a bitch and get the fuck over it, dude. Acting like he was about to break bad, he said, oh, so you trying to get with David now? I opened the door back up and I looked at him. And if I am, Ryan looked like I was crazy. Cindy, that man has a girlfriend and you need to mind your business. And like I said, get the fuck over it. Now, bye before my father wakes up and comes down here and steal you in the face for waking him up. He was about to start crying. I knew it wasn't going to be long before the waterfall started. Cindy, please. I slammed the door in his face and went straight to my room to start my homework.
I looked out my window and watched Ryan mope his droopy ass to his mother's Jeep, and he had the nerve to slam his hand on the hood of the Jeep like he was pissed or something, and I didn't give a shit. Ryan was starting to piss me off. He nor Amanda, neither one of them was going to stand in my way when it came to David, and the both of them just had to get the fuck over it. School was out, and students were pouring into their school buses, talking so loud I could hardly hear myself think. And a lot of times, kids would group up together to walk home. I was one of the few kids who had their own car. When Kathy and I got in my car, it felt like an oven. It was scorching hot that day. As I was about to start my car, I heard this buzzing sound. I looked around, and sure enough, a bee was flying around and against my back window. Oh my god, I know that is not a bee in my car, I said, screaming and rushing out of the car like it was on fire. Kathy remained in the car, smacking the damn bee, holding the door open for him until he flew out and away from me. Girl, get in the car, Kathy said, closing the passenger side door. The bee is gone, come on. As I was getting back in my car, I noticed David and Amanda getting in the car. His parents bought him a black-on-black -black Camaro with 20-inch rims that shined like sterling silver. I started my car and decided to follow them. I wanted to know where David lived anyway. I followed David down Fort Washington Road when he made a right turn onto West Tantalon. I continued following him. Instead of going straight to Waterford Cove, the west side of Tantalon was where all the mansions were. Kathy looked at me and said, Cindy, what are you doing? I started laughing because Kathy knew damn well what I was doing. She said, this is not the way home. You're following David. Still laughing, I said, and you know it. David made a right turn onto Monterey Circle, a one-way in, one-way out cul-de-sac neighborhood. The houses there were huge and beautiful. On your left, as you entered the neighborhood, the mansions sat on the Tantalon Country Club golf course, and most of the houses on your right were waterfront homes sitting on Swan Creek. David made a right turn onto Settles Court and pulled into the driveway of his gorgeous home. The colossal of a house had a fairy tale like look to it, with large bay windows and tall columns, and the yard was, as my yard obsessed dad would say, was tidy and trimmed. I said, is this his house? Kathy nodded and said, yeah, I think so. They're probably going straight to his room for a little after school delight. I looked at Kathy. She cracked up, laughing in my face, rubbing it in, and I could have strangled her for putting that thought in my head. I drove down to the end of the street and made a U-turn and parked near the driveway of David's house. Kathy and I sat in my car, only a few feet away from David's car, watching him and Amanda talk. All you could see was their heads and mouths moving. I wanted to get out and walk over and interrupt them, just straight take over the conversation. But when I saw David lean over and kiss Amanda, I wanted to get out and interrupt them by punching Amanda in her face, breaking her glasses. Yeah, Kathy said, smiling. I'd say this is about to lead to a little after-school delight. Then, to my surprise... Amanda got out of the car, shouldering her backpack and heading to the front door. What? It was Amanda's house? Her parents must have had a little money. Well, not little money, big money. Kathy said, wait a minute, this is Amanda's house? David backed his car out of the driveway and Amanda stood there, watching him drive away. She looked like she was crazy in love with him, as if she was never going to see him again. Good, I said. Now I know where she lives. Just in case I have to come over here and tell her to stay away from my man. Me and Kathy both had a laugh at that one. And as I drove off to follow David, I stuck my head out the window and gave Amanda the biggest smile and wave, letting her know I was following her man, soon to be my man, to his house. She just stood there in her yard watching me follow David, lost for words, and the expression on her face was funny. She looked like somebody played a nasty tasting trick on her. I followed David all the way to his house on Asbury Drive 
off East Tantalon Road. It was an old, well-kept split-level home with a small yard and a sad tree in the middle of it. He parked his car in the front of the house, and I parked behind him. Kathy laughed as David and I got out of our cars at the same time. David stopped and gave me a funny look as I walked up to him. A slow, sexy walk. Oh my god, David said, smiling. Are you following me home now? I'm doing what I have to do, I said, staring into his eyes. And that is? And that is to get my man. David looked at me strangely and frowned. To get your man? That's right, to get my man. And who is that? I stared at him, lost in love. You, I said. Me? And I'm not going anywhere until you admit it. I leaned back against his car and crossed my arms. David looked around as if he was looking for someone to help him figure this out. What am I supposed to be admitting? Uh, joke time and being cute was over. I got serious about it. That you want me, I said. That we want each other. David stood there, lost for words, with this funny look on his face. He frowned and said, What? And that you would rather take me to the prom than take Focals. I offended him a little. Then take who? Focals? Did you just call my girl Focals? Yeah, as in bifocals, I said, grinning like I was up to no good. Which I wasn't. Yo, my girlfriend's glass is not thick. Coke bottles, girl. You need to give her a call later on. I'm going to give her a call later on. I call her every night. And when you call her, you need to let her know you're taking me to the prom. Not her. David looked at me. He was wondering if he should take me seriously or not. Cindy, you need to get out of here with that. I am taking Amanda to the prom, baby. Do you know how good we'll look walking into the prom together? Our senior prom? David laughed a little and actually thought about it. He nodded and said, Yeah, I'm pretty sure we'd look good together, but I'm going to be looking good with my girl Amanda because I'm taking her. Why? I said, sounding like my usual self. A spoiled brat, which I was. My way or no way. Because I'm in love with Amanda. Boy, look at me. I threw my hands up as if I was giving myself to him as an early Christmas gift. Cindy, I look at you every day. I am serious. Look at me. You can have this. It's yours. It's got your name on it. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does, I said, smiling. No, Amanda isn't as gorgeous as you, Cindy, but I think she's cute as a button. Please, a cute button isn't gorgeous like I am. David got serious on me. It was rare to see him like that because he was always smiling. Look, like I said, you are so gorgeous, but I can't go there with you like that. I love Amanda. That's my girl. I plan to marry her and start a family with her one day. I looked at David. And for the first time, he made me want to throw up in his face and all over his letterman jacket. I said, David, you actually want to have kids with her? Yeah, I do. David said, walking off, headed for his front door. Well, bye. I said, pissed. All right, I'll holler at you later. He said, going into the house, I'll see you at school. I pouted my way back over to my car and got in it. Kathy looked into my broken-hearted face. So what happened? She said. I stared at David's house for a minute and said, You know what I need to do, Kathy? I need to get him alone. Kathy looked at me. Get him alone to do what? What do you think? I'm going to catch him one day when his parents aren't home and it's just going to be me and him. The smile I had on my face, I knew it could have changed, charmed the rattle out of a snake. Done deal? 
done deal. Trust me, Kathy, it will be a done deal. I know that's right. And when we do it, I'm going to moan so loud, calling out his name. And guess what else I'm going to do? Kathy smiled. What? I'm going to get it all on my phone, record the whole thing. And girl, it's going to be hot. Yeah, Kathy said, a hot mess like you. I was sitting across the couch talking to Ryan on my cell phone. One of my favorite shows, Pretty Little Liars, was on TV. And as usual, Ryan was getting on my last fucking nerve. I said, look, my parents are gone out for the night. My brother is spending the night over at a friend's house. And I have the house to myself. And I don't want to be bothered with anybody, especially you. The hothead Ryan was, he said, yelling. But... How are you going to just break up with me to be with David? Who the fuck does that? I know one thing. You better stop screaming in my car. Then he calmed down, acting like he had some sense. Lowering his voice, he said, Cindy, I'm sorry. I just want to see you. Can I come over and see you? Let's just talk about this. It's nothing else to talk about. I'm done talking to you. It's over, Ryan. It's been over about a month now, and you're still trying to get back with me. It's over. I am going to be with David probably for the rest of my life. Ryan didn't know how serious I was. There was a silent pause. Then he said, Cindy, you're crazy. No, I'm not. David loves Amanda, Cindy, Ryan said. And he had this smug sound in his voice like he was trying to piss me off and then he had the nerve to have some sympathy in his voice like I was feeling sorry for myself and wanted everybody else to feel sorry for me too like I had no chance with David he's not going to leave her for you do you realize how many girls come at him a day and some of them look as good as you and he still turns them down he loves Amanda. First of all, I know how many girls come at him a day. Second of all, I don't give a shit how many girls come at him a day. And third, Ryan, you fucking hater. None of those girls look as good as me. None of them. Then he came with a sympathy voice again. He said, please, Cindy, can I come over? I just want to see you. And didn't I just tell you, dumbass, that I didn't want to be bothered by you? Cindy, please. The doorbell rang. I got up from the couch to see who it was. And don't call me anymore. I'm serious. Bye. Ryan started yelling and cussing at me again. And I wasted not another second and hung up on him. When I got to the door, I didn't even look to see who it was opening it. When I saw who it was, I had to step back, and I couldn't help but glare at her as if she had lost her mind. And I believe she did, because she damn sure had the nerve to ring my doorbell. Amanda was staring dead in my face, and she was pissed big time. She was always the bubbly type. I had never seen her mad before. She said, you better stay out of David's face, and I'm serious. Her anger didn't scare me, nor impress me. She looked like a corny fool. I said, Amanda, come in. We need to talk. I don't need to come in. I just need you to stay away from my boyfriend and stay the fuck out of his face. I threw my head back, and I couldn't help but smile. Miss Goody Two-Shoes, trying to cuss. I wanted to laugh, but I needed to be serious because this was serious business to me. I was taking this girl's boyfriend away from her, and I felt, although I didn't have to, that I needed to explain a couple of things to her, like why I was doing this to her. I followed David home, after he dropped you off, I said, and we had a talk. Amanda looked at me like she wanted to charge after me and murder me in the foyer of my own home. To talk about what? What else? Us? As in me and him. 
minus your ass. So, you might want to step inside so you can hear this. Amanda crossed her arms, glaring at me with murder in all four of those eyes of hers, and she stepped into my house. How dare she enter my home with a funky attitude. I didn't care if I was stealing her boyfriend or not. Look, Amanda, I just broke it down to him that he really wants to be with me, not you, I said, as I led Amanda to the family room. You can have a seat. With her arms still crossed and her face still tight, she snapped. No, I'm not going to. I'm going to stand. What did you tell my boyfriend? Her snapping at me was starting to piss me off. I started to smack her face and knock her glasses into the fireplace and burn them so she couldn't see her way home. But I remembered. I remained calm and I said, I told him that he and I would look a lot better going to the prom together than you and him. Amanda had that look on her face of a person that was just told that a sinkhole sucked up her house. She said, you told my boyfriend that bullshit? Of course I told him. And it's not bullshit. This is for real. Amanda started yelling, saying, Cindy, how can you tell my boyfriend stuff like that, disrespecting me? Amanda, you need to get over it. It's nothing for me to get over. David is my boyfriend, and that's the way it's going to be. I step up in Amanda's face. I am taking David away from you. He's mine. I just got through talking to David and he told me that you followed him home. I just told you I did. Amanda moved closer to me, dead into my eyes, waving her finger. Look, I'm going to get straight to the point because I'm tired of your bullshit. I'm tired of your bullshit too. Stay away from my boyfriend. Amanda, you better get your finger out of my face, I said, standing with my fists balled. And you better stay out of my boyfriend's face. Seriously, you need to get your finger out of my face. Still with her finger in my face, Amanda said. And you better stay away from my boyfriend. He doesn't want to have anything to do with you, Cindy. He doesn't want you. I grabbed a handful of Amanda's hair and pushed and shoved her into the wall next to the fireplace. She reached out and scratched my face. I slammed her head into the wall. Amanda's head hit the wall so hard, it left a greasy stain. I'm glad it didn't leave a hole. I held locks of her hair with both hands, kicking her like I was kicking dust out of a hanging rug. She got tired of me beating the shit out of her, and she screamed out in rage. I wanted to put my hand over her mouth to keep her from alarming the neighbors. She reached out and tried to scratch my face again and ended up scratching the side of my neck. I couldn't let her mess up my face. I needed my gorgeous face for David and the prom. She started swinging at me like a wild alley cat. I ducked and weaved like a boxer, but her punches were coming at me like lightning strikes. I grabbed the collar of her shirt and backed up, pulling her with me, and I punched her so hard in the face it dazed her, and I saw her knees buckle. Her eyes were big, scary, and watery. She was trying to kill me. She came off like if she lost David to another woman, she would die. Or worse, kill somebody. We were both winded and sweaty already, and the burning fireplace didn't make it any better. And just as I was about to throw the uppercut to her jaw, that skinny bitch kneed me in the stomach. Her bony knee felt like a broomstick. The sound came... From me, it sounded like I had the wind knocked out of me, and I did. It felt like the worst stomach ache in history. Balled up on the floor, I was praying pain would hurry up and go away. The frown on my face felt ugly, and the first time I ever caught that I was ugly, and I couldn't let Amanda get away with that. Amanda was walking so fast, I didn't think I would catch her, so I ran. And I was so light on my bare feet that she didn't hear or see me coming. But first, I had to grab something from one of the kitchen cabinets. She got in her car, an orange Suzuki Covey, slamming the door like she was pissed, which I was sure she was, but she carried it like she kicked my ass and was going to get away with it. And there was no way, in any kind of self-made hell, I was going to let her get away with dropping me to my knees.
Her windows were down. She called herself enjoying the awesome spring weather we were having, but she wasn't going to be enjoying it for long. I wanted to catch her before she drove off, so I moved up to her fast, running on my tiptoes with a fork part of the hanger which I grabbed from one of the kitchen cabinets. I bashed her in the head as soon as she started the car. She grabbed her head, leaning over against the driver's door. With her head halfway hanging out the window, I bashed her head again and again and again and again. I had to stop. I had to lean over and catch my breath. My adrenaline pumped hard, like my heart. I was lightheaded, thirsting for more of Amanda's blood. When I peeped up, Amanda wasn't moving. She was out cold. I should have been careful what I asked for because more of Amanda's blood was coming, coming hard. It started dripping from her head and down the sides of the driver's side door in the long, skinny streams. I raised up, my own blood rushing to my head, and I felt hot and sweaty because I was starting to panic. Amanda, I said. She didn't move. I called her again. Nothing. I stepped up to her, looking around to make sure I wasn't seen or being watched. She looked like she was lying against the door asleep. I leaned down, looking at her face. Her eyes were open, staring straight at me. Oh my god. What have I done? Amanda Moss was dead. Dead as a doorknob. I killed her. When I looked down at the hammer in my hand, it had her blood all over it. Even worse, I had her blood all over my hand. And when I looked back up at her, drops of blood were dripping from the door to the ground. Dark red drops. My mouth got watery and my stomach became queasy, became queasy. I was calm when I walked back to my front yard. I didn't want to rush and fall down when I threw up. So, when I planted my feet in the grass, I bent over and let it out. Once I was done, earling, I looked up and around to make sure again that I wasn't being watched. Most of the lights were off in the houses of my neighborhood, but that didn't mean somebody wasn't up peeping through their blinds being nosy. Then I turned toward the entrance of my neighborhood to make sure no cars were coming, especially with blood running down Amanda's driver's side door like a waterfall. I eased back over to Amanda, trying to relax, to get my stomach together to myself. I thanked God no one was walking their dog, and that's when Ryan crept up behind me from nowhere. He scared the hell out of me. He scared me so bad, I wanted to crack his head open too. Damn, Ryan, I said. You scared the shit out of me. Ryan walked past me, ignoring me, and he looked like all the blood had drained from his face. His mouth was open, and from the look on his face, I knew I was on my way to prison for murder. In prison for the rest of my natural life, I wanted to take the bloody hammer in my hand and whack Ryan with it. Might as well, I figured, I was already going to jail for the rest of my life for one murder, so why not get two bloody counts for one life sentence deal? Before Ryan could turn back to look at me, like I was stone crazy, I was already thinking of an excuse. He said, Cindy, what the, what the fuck did you do? Ryan turned and faced me. He looked down at the hammer in my hand and he had that look. And for a minute, held that look. I thought he was going to wrestle it out of my hand and hold me down to the ground until the police got there. Not as he, you can't get away with no shit like this. You killed that girl, man. I shook my head, acting like he was seeing things. Knowing damn well, he knew what he was looking at. A dead body. Oh, so, you expect to get away with this shit? Are you crazy? He shook. He took his phone and started dialing. 
I rushed up to him and grabbed his hand, the hand that was holding the phone. He stopped and looked at me like he was insulted or something. And he said, what? Ryan. I said, whining. I could feel I was close to tears because I was scared. I wasn't ready for prison. What? Ryan said, raising his voice a little. Who, who are you calling? Who do you think? He said, continuing to dial 911. I'm calling the police. I grabbed his hand again, stopping him. Ryan? What? Please. Please what? Let's, we, we need to talk. No, he said, snatching his hand away from me to dial 911. Ryan, please, come on. Ryan, please, come on. Ryan stopped and held his phone behind his back. Come on, what? Talk to me. Talk to you about what? Talk to you about how you smashed Amanda Moss's head in with that fucking hammer? She attacked me, Ryan. Ryan shook his head and said, Bullshit. I'm not lying. Bullshit. Amanda wouldn't attack a damn fly. Ryan, please. You know what? That shit. Amanda wouldn't attack nobody. And you know that shit. Amanda wouldn't attack nobody. She attacked me in my own house. I said, my voice cracking. Close to tears. I turned my head to show him the scratches on my neck. She attacked me, Ryan. I'm telling you the truth. Ryan looked at the scratches and shook his head again. Mm. They looked like defensive scratches to me. He put his phone back up to the face to dial. You fucking killed that girl, man. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. You fucking killed that girl, man. That's fucked up. Ryan dialed 911 and put the phone to his ear. I reached out and grabbed his phone and we struggled with it. And I was dead serious when I looked him in the face and said, you need to listen to me. Hang up the phone. Ryan could tell I was serious. He hit the end button and looked at me for an explanation. My eyes were burning with tears and I wiped them away, praying I didn't get blood into my eyes. He said, what, Cindy? What do you want, huh? You want me to help you? I nodded, wiping away more tears. Oh, so you drop me to be with David. I'm sorry. Sorry, my ass. And then you want him so bad you murdered this girl? And then you ask me to help you? I stared hard into those big, googly eyes of his. Ryan, Ryan, what do you want? Just... Be straight up with me. What do you want? Ryan looked me up and down like he was at Best Buy, looking at an 80-inch TV he was fantasizing about buying. You, he said, staring back into my eyes. I want you back. I want you to be my girl again. Why didn't I see that coming? I knew he was going to say that. He was serious and I knew I couldn't cry and bullshit my way out of it. I nodded my head, and a tear finally left my eyes. Rolling down my cheek, Ryan leaned toward me as if he was hard of hearing. Say that again. Like an idiot, I stood there giving it some thought. For a split brain freeze of a second, I thought, well... With Amanda out of the way, I got a good chance at David, of course, forgetting that I just murdered his girlfriend. When Ryan stepped off, acting like he was about to call the police, that snapped me back to reality. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm your girl again. We're back together. Ryan had the nerve to turn around and face me with this big, goofy-ass smile on his face, with his arms out for a hug. And he said, welcome back home, baby. 
He stomped up to me and hugged me, holding me tight. I didn't hug him back. I just stood there with my arms and the hammer at my side. I realized how miserable my life was going to be at that point. Ain't nothing like making somebody an offer they can't refuse, Slim. Then he busted out laughing like he had the last laugh. And he did. I said, shh, before you wake the whole fucking neighborhood up. So what's next? When Ryan looked past me, headlights hit his pupils. Well, you better think of something fast. A car is coming. I turned and saw a car coming into the neighborhood, and I almost wet myself. It's my parents. Ryan started moving fast toward Amanda's car. Come on, help me lay her across the front seat so they won't see her. I ran over to Amanda's side with Ryan. Stand in front of the door so they won't see the blood, Ryan said, opening the passenger side door. That car was coming down the street, straight at us. All I could see were headlights. I tossed the bloody hammer into the back seat and stood in the driver's side door so they wouldn't see the blood. Ryan grabbed Amanda by her shirt and pulled her across the front seats of her car so she wouldn't be seen. Then, just as the car was approaching us, he walked behind Amanda's car and stood in front of the tag, hiding it. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see the car passing my house. I was so glad. I rested my forehead on the roof of the car and sighed, relieved it wasn't my parents. Me and Ryan turned and watched the car pull into the garage of a home at the end of the street. As soon as the garage door shut, I looked across the roof to the car at Ryan for our next move. All right. That was close, Ryan said, walking around the car to face me. Let's pull her car in your garage so we can figure out what we're going to do next.